Ladies and gentlemen, dear WEA family, welcomes and greetings to the handover ceremony of the Secretary General of the World Evangelical Alliance. My name is Lilian Kurz from the WEA Sustainability Center in Bonn, and I have the distinct pleasure and honor to guide you through today's event. On behalf of the International Council of the World Evangelical Alliance, I am greeting you and your families. It is not an easy time for any one of us, and my hope and my prayer is that you can watch this live stream event feeling fit and healthy, knowing that even as we and the communities that we are serving are suffering, our Lord Jesus Christ has overcome the suffering, and he's with us every step of the way. I pray that God blesses you wherever you are. Thank you for joining. Last October, the International Council announced the appointment of Bishop Dr. Thomas Schirmacher as the new Secretary General of the WEA. On March 1st, that is this coming Monday, he will succeed Bishop Ephraim Tendero, who has led the WEA since 2015. We want to come together to celebrate the many accomplishments over the last six years that God has allowed through Bishop F and acknowledge his contributions to the WEA. And then we will induct the new Secretary General, Thomas Schirmacher, and his deputies, Dr. Peirong Lin and Reverend Dr. Brian Winslade. Together, we want to bless the new leadership team as they take on their new roles. With contributions, prayers, and blessings from all over the world, our hope is that this ceremony is going to be a memorable event, bringing us all together as the WEA family. Even if we are not seeing each other physically, let us unite with each other in spirit and join the blessings and prayers of this event in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I am sure that every one of you would have preferred to be together in person for this important occasion. However, we are excited that the digital event provides the opportunity for all of you to be a part of it. We are grateful for the many members, affiliates, partners and friends who are joining the event today. We are hosting the event in a TV studio in Cologne, in Germany, next to the beautiful city of Bonn, where Thomas Schirmacher resides. With me in the studio are Bishop Thomas, Bishop F, Peirong Lin, Reverend Frank Hinkelmann, the Vice Chair of the International Council, and Eckhard Vetter, the Chair of the German Evangelical Alliance. Please understand that due to COVID-19 restrictions, only two people are allowed in front of the camera. This regulation is the reason for why the WA leaders could not bring their spouses and families to the event, something that we very much regret. Please also note that everyone who appears in front of the camera was, thanks be to God, just tested negative for COVID-19, and this is why we can appear next to each other without wearing a mask. Now, allow me to take a brief moment to introduce you to the virtual environment that we are gathering in and to some of its functions. If you watch the live stream directly on YouTube, you have the opportunity to chat with fellow WA family members on the right hand side of the video screen. My colleague Ruth is there to answer any questions that you may have. Also, there's an event page for the handover ceremony where you can find the program and information on all the speakers that are joining us today. If you join the event as a speaker on Microsoft Teams, there's a speaker chat for you where Timothy, the WEA Chief Communication Officer, and Tim Becker from the st studio here in Cologne are assisting you in case of technical questions. And now, it is my distinct honor to begin the ceremony by handing over to the Chair of the International Council of the WEA, Bishop Dr. Goodwill Shana, who will lead us into a devotion. Dear Goodwill, kindly take the floor. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Lillian. Uh, greetings in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ to the WEA family across the world. Our short devotion today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 42 and verse 45. There are three themes that emerge from this chapter. Uh, the themes of continuity, renewal, and transformation. 
We see these three things in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost, where they continued tarrying in obedience to the instruction of the Lord Jesus Christ until the Holy Spirit brought renewal and transformation. As W enters a new era, may the Lord grant that we see continuity, renewal, and transformation through our new leadership. This is so well illustrated in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. They continued steadfastly. As WA goes through the leadership transition, may we maintain a steadfast, Bible-based, and Christ-focused continuity in a world of instability, uncertainty, and doctrinal confusion. They continued in fellowship and in breaking of bread. May WA be a place of fellowship, partnership, and communion in a world of isolation, social distancing, and loneliness. And this event is a typical example of what our world has become. May the WA bring fellowship and unity in every area of endeavor. May the Lord bring unity and fellowship to our families, to our churches, and to our leadership. They continued in prayer. May WA be a place of prayer uh, that the world desperately needs, even in these dark hours. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 45, it says they sold their things and gave to everyone according to their need. I pray that God will make WEA and our places of worship, places of generosity in these days, in these days where there's economic uh, hardship. May we, the church, become a place of generosity, a place of love and sacrificial giving that will meet the needs of many around the world. I want to thank God for our generous partners and donors that have given so much for WA to come this far. I will also want to appreciate all of the people across, some of them nameless, that have given of your time, your talent, and your treasures. And then finally, as a result of this, the Lord added daily such as should be saved. And so I pray that all of this work, all of this event that we are seeing today, will culminate in the most important thing that our Lord Jesus is looking for, the salvation of souls. I pray that together as WA, we will work to see his kingdom come and the salvation of souls, of families, communities, and nations across the world. This is the reason why he came. And this is the reason why we serve. And this is the main purpose why we are gathered here together. May God bless our gathering. May God continue to work in us with continuity, with renewal, and with transformation. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you very much, dear God, for, for your wonderful words and prayer. I am now pleased to introduce the tribute to the outgoing Secretary General, Bishop Ephraim Tendero. We want to acknowledge and celebrate Bishop F's contributions to the WEA and deeply thank him for his service and leadership over the past six years. We will start by watching a video about Bishop F's tenure and his accomplishments. This will be followed by words of appreciation and prayer by WEA leaders and members. Afterwards, we are honored to hear from Bishop F himself. Hello, I'm Brian Stiller, and it's my honor to bring a tribute to my dear friend, Ephraim Tendero. As the global evangelical movement grew towards the estimated 600 million it is today, it desperately needed an organization with an effective and influential voice, similar to how the Vatican and the World Council of Churches speak for their constituencies. Our previous Secretary General, Jeff Tunnicliffe, led us in establishing a significant public presence as a global entity for the first time. During the last six years, Ephraim Tendero has enabled us to capitalize on this global visibility by working to reorganize the WEA into a better and well-governed ministry. Bishop Ephraim has succeeded in this work because of his gentle team spirit and genuine humility. His unassuming, welcome, non-defensive nature has brought many great leaders into the WEA's orbit and empowered them to apply their gifts for the kingdom's benefit. 
He recruited outstanding people with skill and discernment who now guide our commissions and task forces and do our administrative work. We also will see the need for God's word, how it is profitable being the word breathed out by God, profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness so that the man of God will be equipped, prepared for every good work. Under Ephraim's leadership, the International Council was renewed as an effective governing board. He worked with the IC to reconfigure the executive office with two deputies assisting the Secretary General and to establish six global offices so as to expand our operations and bring us closer to our global constituency. Having our senior staff working in this decentralized way became especially useful when the COVID-19 pandemic limited travel. Ephraim also brought clarification to departments and management structures, ensuring that we had meaningful lines of responsibility and means of accountability. His unpretentious manner, his desire for cooperative action made him the right person to shepherd this new organizational model. The broad participation and collaboration that Ephraim has facilitated are evidence in the progress of our Roadmap 2030 strategic plan and our efforts to make disciple making part of every evangelical's DNA. Under his watch, the WEA created an institute for the training of regional and national alliances and strengthened its global advocacy for religious freedom. We have substantially increased our revenues during the last six years, and following the General Assembly, we ended up with a modest surplus that I think was the first for us. Ephraim came to us as a learned and graceful diplomat. He has represented the WEA with competence and dignity in high-level settings such as the United Nations and major interfaith events. One of the most exciting things to celebrate as Ephraim completes his six years Secretary General is that he's not leaving. After completing the smooth transition of leadership to our new Secretary General, he will join me as a colleague in the role of Global Ambassador. Having traveled to dozens of countries in the last decade, I know that Ephraim will provide valuable service for us all. He is a person of great stature. In his meetings with top political and religious leaders around the globe, he has always done us proud. And I know he'll continue to represent us in such distinguished ways. I dearly prize our close and deep friendship, and I look forward to partnering with him in developing strategies that will serve our evangelical brothers and sisters around the world. Ephraim, thank you for embracing this call to global leadership and fulfilling that role with grace, dedication, professionalism, steadfastness, and integrity. Again, a big thank you to my dear brother, Ephraim. God bless you. On behalf of the senior leadership team, I would like to express our appreciation to Bishop Tendera for his leadership during his tenure as General Secretary of WEA. I first met him in 1997 in Manila when I attended WEA Leadership Institute led by Dr. June Venser. He has not changed much over the 24 years in his looks, his servant attitude and the passion for the global church. Over the past year, the senior leadership team has become a close-knit family concerned about how best we can serve together. Bishop has led us with a firm hand and a pastoral heart. His concern for our own situations regarding our families and our health has always preceded our formal agendas. And I have watched as he related to the group as a fellow pilgrim serving God's kingdom together. Leading a stream of strong, world visionary and opinionated leaders from across the globe is not easy. But he was able to coax the best contribution from each one, knowing our strengths. When there was no consensus, he would gently defer, making a final decision. His servant leadership style has given each of us an opportunity to contribute our skills and expertise to the WEA family. Johannes Reimer of the Department of Public Engagement says, Bishop F has been an encourager to me, supporting even when others missed to see the point. A great man of God. My colleagues, Jay Matengo is the Director of Missions Department, writes, I encountered an approachable, warm and pastoral leader with a passion for evangelistic 
witness. When I joined the senior leadership team, I quickly appreciated his organizational skills and his love for the global church and vision for God. Because of his leadership, the WEA is in a healthy position to grow into the future, for which we are all grateful. As he transitions into a new role in WEA, we join him and wish him well. Thank you so much. On behalf of the Asia Evangelical Alliance, the Evangelical Churches in Asia, and on behalf of my peers, the Regional General Secretaries, I would like first to congratulate Dr. Thomas Schirmacher as the new Secretary General of World Evangelical Alliance. I pray through his leadership, the church will find its a finest moment to shine, to fulfill her call to be the salt and the light of the world. I pray that through his leadership, every followers of Christ, young and old, children, youth and seniors, will take the Great Commission seriously to make disciples of all people. I pray that through his leadership, we will witness the significant advancement of the kingdom of God on earth. Now, I would like to thank Bishop Ephraim Tendero, the outgoing Secretary General of the WEA for his able leadership. I have witnessed this man of God provide leadership and learn from him. He always tried to create an environment of unity, always inclusive, always inviting every part of the evangelical community to play a part in strengthening the church. I would like to pray that in his next season as the ambassador at large for WEA, he continue to thrive, provide unifying force through his humility, through his learning postures, and the way he always identify potential among young people to reach their full potential. Bishop F, thank you so much. I'm proud to be called your partners. God bless you. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to say words of appreciation to Bishop F on behalf of the International Council and the whole of the World Evangelical Alliance family. I'd like to appreciate Bishop F for his service as Secretary General and CEO of the World Evangelical Alliance for the past six years. He has served with deep commitment, sacrifice, a Christ-like personality and character that is second to none. Seven leadership, humility, grace, gracious leadership, and statesman stature are some of the attributes that describe him. And I've got to know him at very close quarters as we worked on a monthly meeting together. We again say thank you to him, his dear wife, uh, Sierra, and his family, and his team. WA is a much better and much greater organization because of his contribution, because of your contribution, Bishop F., and that of his team. Thankfully, as others have said, we are not losing him altogether, as he will continue to serve as our second global uh, ambassador together with Brian Steeler. Again, Bishop F., thank you, thank you, thank you. From the International Council, the WA family, and other global partners, may God richly bless you. Let me offer this prayer. Gracious Lord, we offer thanks to you for setting aside our brother Ephraim Tendero for these past six years to lead us ably in our global ministry. Now, as he turns his attention to serve as global ambassador, continue to endow him with your gifts of wisdom and grace as he encourages our leaders and friends around the world in their service. As he travels to the four corners of this world, grant him safety and well-being as he brings his great experience and knowledge of the ways of our Lord. The writer to the Hebrews offers this prayer, and I give it to you, my brother Ephraim, as you lay down your role as Secretary General and take up the role as Global Ambassador. May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, 
equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, we give you our thanks for the faithful service of your servant, Ephraim, in the work of the World Evangelical Alliance over the past six years. We thank you for giving him the daily strength, the courage and the resilience to keep to the clear and consistent path which you have given to us as an alliance to fulfill our worldwide mission. We pray that you will continue to enable and bless him and his dear wife as they serve you in their future ministry until at the end of their earthly pilgrimage they receive their heavenly reward from your own hands. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Thank you very much for these kind words and prayers. It has truly been a blessing and a great privilege to serve in this role. As I look back at the last few years, it is very evident that these are not my accomplishments, but it has been God's work. And I am grateful that He has used me as His tool to lead the WEA forward. Now that I am handing over the leadership, I would like to share a few words of reflection on my tenure and what it has what it has been like to serve in the WEA. When I was first invited to consider becoming Secretary General, I dismissed the idea. It seemed too big and overwhelming. However, looking back today, I am grateful that God inspired me to reconsider and to take on this awesome task. I am grateful to everyone who supported me through these six years as I have given the job my best shot every day. Like Nehemiah rebuilding the wall around Jerusalem, I could achieve nothing without the many gifted and faithful people around me doing the work. I never had a dull moment in the last six years. Unifying the world's innumerable evangelical organizations behind a global vision is not easy. Relying on God's guidance and enabling, I outlined the target milestones for my stewardship of the WEA with the intention of building a healthier and stronger ministry for the 21st century. With God's direction and with the help of many partners, our team worked to reorganize the WEA into a better and more well-governed ministry. I want to especially thank our dear brother, Dr. Brian Steeler, who tirelessly worked with me to bring the WEA on a stable footing, both organizationally and financially. The WEA now has a powerful voice on the world stage, to an extent that would have been unimaginable just a couple of decades ago. Representing hundreds of millions of evangelicals has opened doors for me to meet senior religious and political leaders around the world, with whom I also have had the opportunity to share biblical principles and the gospel message. An early experience that, remi that remained in me until now was during my very first week as Secretary General. We had an afternoon meeting scheduled with the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon in New York. But there was a big snowstorm and the city was closing early. So we figured that the appointment would be cancelled. Well, instead, we got a call asking us to come at 11 in the morning. I was deeply impressed that he considered the WEA so important that he had rearranged his schedule to be able to meet with us. Ban Ki-moon told me that the UN wanted to partner with faith-based organizations like ours that supported both development and values, and especially one that was actively promoting peace in a world 
where religion so often inspires violence. I was amazed that the UN Secretary General treated me as his equal, but he reminded me that we both have the same title. In my six years, I've been privileged to enlist and work with outstanding men and women with skills and discernment who serve in guiding our commissions and task forces and in administrative work. I'm pleased that these people will continue to serve in their various capacities. I'm glad to pass on the stewardship of the WA to my colleague and dear friend, Bishop Thomas Schemacher. He is superbly positioned to lead the WEA forward as its next Secretary General. He is a world-class theologian and a prolific writer who can articulate evangelical views clearly. He has global credibility in intrafaith and interfaith settings and his work is solidly grounded in evangelical commitment so that he can facilitate collaboration without compromise. A respected leader and team player, Thomas can productively deploy and the expertise of fellow evangelical leaders. And he has a wonderfully supportive family, the wife who is an Islamic scholar, and children who are great professionals who have contributed significantly to the WEA's work. After I pass on the baton, I will not be leaving the WEA, but will serve as senior statesman and global ambassador. In this capacity, I will assist the new Secretary General in his global representation and coverage. I believe that the WEA is stronger today than it has ever been. This would not have been possible without the prayers, generosity, and the support of many. I am very grateful to all those who have accompanied me on this journey. And for the many conversations, encouragement, and enriching moments. And I look forward to continue this journey in fellowship with other leaders as I transition to my new role. There remains much room for growth. The WEA is indispensable to the global evangelical movement. I am excited to see what God will do in and through the WEA in the years ahead. And I thank God for this incredible experience and I look forward to continuing to serve God's kingdom through the WEA. During his tenure, Bishop F. was supported by two wonderful leaders in the WEA family, Godfrey Yogoraja and Ray Swatkowski, his Deputy Secretaries General. We now want to take a moment to acknowledge their accomplishments, their leadership and service for the WEA. For this, I'm inviting Goodwill to speak. Dear Goodwill, kindly take the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Lillian. Before I do, may I just say a short prayer for Bishop uh, F, uh, which I was intended to have done much earlier. Lord, we want to thank you for your vessel that you used in the past six years. We thank you for his humility, we thank you for his uh, Christ-like character, and we want to thank you for his servant leadership. We thank you that you will reward him for all that he has done and all the accomplishments that we boast of as WA. We pray for blessing upon him and his family. May the seeds he planted grow and multiply. May he establish the work of his hands, and may we see a greater and better uh, WA blossom out of all of his work. May the hand of the Lord be upon him as global ambassador. May you bless him and keep him and cause your face to shine upon him. Protect him, preserve him, and bless the work of his hands. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So the great strides and uh, significant uh, accomplishment uh, achieved by uh, Bishop F and WA could not have happened if Bishop F did not have a great support team in Dr. Godfrey, Raja Yoga, and Ray Swatkowski. This team came to be affectionately known 
as the OSG, the Office of the Secretary General. Godfrey's many years of experience in the NEA in Sri Lanka and with the Religious Liberties Desk and work with the Asian Alliance helped to bring great insight, wisdom, and practical engagement in dealing with issues on the ground. Indeed, he is a face and a name that does not need much introduction in the WA and NEA circles. We are pleased that his experience and his wisdom will not be lost from WA as Godfrey has joined the International Council as a regional representative for Asia Evangelical Alliance and will also serve in a variety of positions in WA, particularly in the religious liberties area. Again, we want to say thank you, Godfrey. May God bless you, your, your service, your labor, your commitment, and your sacrifice has not gone unnoticed. And we pray that God will richly, richly reward you here and in the hereafter. Ray has been the safe hands that has ensured that the WA's financial and operational machinery was in place and running smoothly. And his uh, mature demeanor, his experience, and uh, his uh, grace uh, enabled uh, uh, the operational side to ensure that uh, WA is where it is right now. He's done a great job of ensuring that all of our financial, operational, and organizational obligations are up to scratch. In this regard, I would like to acknowledge also the role played by Ken Arts in a supportive role. Our former uh, International Council Treasurer uh, who brought oversight, guidance, and support to Ray. Ray oversaw a number of significant developments in the past few years of his service, but will stay on as Chief Financial Officer to ensure smooth transition as we go into the future. Ray, may God richly bless you uh, you came at the right moment in the right season and you have enabled us to go this far. We stand at this moment because of all the contributions and the service that you gave. On behalf of the International Council of the WA family, I would like to express our deepest and sincerest appreciation for all the work that both of you, the two deputies, contributed to make WA a great and forward looking organization. As we say in Africa, if you want to go fast, go by yourself. But if you want to go far, go with others. And so we as WA, we have come this far because you have accompanied us, you have contributed, you have served as unto the Lord. Thank you, and may God richly bless you, Godfrey and Ray. Thank you, Chairman Goodwill, uh, for your gracious words. Uh, I think it was a great opportunity for us to uh, serve WEA together as a team, and God used uh, the OSG uh, led by Bishop uh, F and um, Ray handling the operations and me handling the ministry uh, in a small way to bless the alliances uh, globally. And now uh, my prayer is that as uh, we hand over to the new OSG, that God would continue to anoint them and lead them and that they would be a blessing too uh, as they work together to build God's kingdom. Thank you. Thank you so much for your kind words, uh, Chairman. Um, it really has been an honor uh, and a joy uh, to serve as part of the first office uh, of the Secretary General with both Bishop Tendero and uh, with Godfrey. Uh, and I'm very grateful for the opportunity to be able to continue to serve uh, in a different capacity in this process of transition moving forward. I'm excited for what God has in store for the WEA in the future. Having thanked and acknowledged Bishop F's, Godfrey's and Ray's leadership and service to the WEA, we are now moving on to introduce the new Secretary General of the World Evangelical Alliance. For this, it is my distinct pleasure to hand over to the Vice Chair of the International Council, Reverend Frank Hinkelmann, who has joined me here in the studio. Dear Frank. Thank you very much, Lillian. On behalf of the uh, International Council of the World Evangelical Alliance, it is my joy and privilege to introduce to you the new Secretary General of the World Evangelical Alliance, Bishop Dr. Thomas Schumacher. Great to have you, Thomas. And we now want to watch 
a video which introduces Thomas. I grew up in an evangelical family with a long history of believers. My father was descendant from Huguenots who fled from France to Austria and later to East Prussia. One of my mother's ancestors was a baker who followed the gospel after hearing the preaching of Martin Luther. My parents' professional world was the university, but they also served on the board of a major evangelical mission society and missionaries came into our home frequently. My older sister and brother were missionaries in Indonesia and in South Africa, respectively. My parents hosted evangelical leaders from around the globe, like the Anglican Archbishop of Uganda, Festuk Evangere, who was martyred by Idi Amin, or the leader of the revival in Indonesia, Pak Octavianus. When I was six years old, Two deaconesses guided me to hand my life over to Jesus Christ as my Lord. For my 50th spiritual birthday, I honored them by preaching in their church and assured them that my childlike faith had never come into conflict with my academic theology. My bishop's cross, designed by American artist Lisa Mickler, shows the center of my life, the seven I am words of Jesus. He is my life, my truth, my light, my good shepherd, and so on. While still a student, I became involved with the late Ralph Winter in a global movement to map the unrich peoples. I translated several editions of Operation World into German, a global prayer movement, especially by Operation Mobilization and Youth with a Mission. Along the way, I came to know all major people groups in the world and the progress of the gospel among them. My wife, Christine, added to this knowledge with her own experience in Muslim people groups around the world. My first doctorate was in missiology, my second in world cultures. In my travels, I enjoy meeting as many ethnic and language groups as possible. I'm fascinated by God's love of diversity. My favorite Bible verse is Revelation 7 verse 9 where John sees a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb. When I was presented the first copy of the Mandinka Bible translation in Gambia on my last journey before the COVID-19 lockdowns in March 2020, I felt like coming home. Since my time as a student, I sought to find ways to serve the persecuted church. Their spirituality has shaped mine to a large extent. Till 1990, we regularly traveled to communist Germany and secretly trained pastors. My interest in religious liberty and human rights brought me into contact with the World Evangelical Alliance. I helped to build up the International Institute for Religious Freedom and later I added intraface and interface relations and the Theological Commission to my WEA portfolio. My role as Bishop of the Anglican Communio Messianica, a network of around a million Muslim background believers in 75 countries, is a direct outcome of my engagement. The picture shows me together with the head of our ruling council, Yasser Erik from Sudan visiting the Patriarch of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. My advocacy for the persecuted church also brought me into close contact and often friendship with the heads of all non-Protestant churches. I visit some of them regularly, such as the head of the Orthodox Church, the Ecumenical Patri Patriarch Bartholomew, the Patriarch of the Syrian Orthodox Church, or the head of the Catholic Church. We don't just do small talk, we tackle major issues together. From 2006 to 2011, I was deeply involved in the development of the statement Christian Witness in a Multi-Religious World, 
which was eventually launched 2011 by the WEA, the World Council of Churches and the Vatican. Its central purpose was to enable religious freedom and world mission. As the statement's first sentence declares, mission belongs to the very being of the church. My love for the persecuted church has led me to visit leaders of non-Christian faiths, to interact with heads of states and governments, to testify in parliaments and courts, to speak at UN events and to lecture at universities around the globe, including unexpected places like the University of the Communist Party in Vietnam. I like to make friends with everyone, regardless of how their views and convictions compare to mine. According to evaluation instruments, my primary gifts include strategy, networking, mediation and leading by conviction. Finally, I should assure all of you that I like to laugh and make fun of myself, as the photo rubric funny on my blog proves. In fact, I collect caricatures of myself. The one I like the most is from the famous Japanese artist Tomokatsu Tabata. As the World Evangelical Alliance, we are thrilled about the uh, partnership and friendship with a number of other global Christian bodies. And we are thankful for the words of greetings which we have received. And you will now hear greetings from the uh, Global Christian Forum, the World Pentecostal Fellowship, and the Lausanne Movement. Greetings. If the world ever needed Jesus, it is now. The gospel of salvation, the gospel of healing, the whole gospel that brings meaning to our lives, gives passion and purpose to our daily lives, is needed now more than ever. As we're all behind closed doors and needing the presence of the one who comes to us and says, Peace, my peace, I give unto you. And so congratulations to Dr. Thomas Schermarker and his two deputies, uh, Puron Ling and Brian Winslade, as they come into leadership of the World Evangelical Alliance. My name is Kaisley Bading Isamwa. I have the privilege of serving as secretary to the Global Christian Forum. And our, it's a forum that brings together church leaders from the World Evangelical Alliance, the World Council of Churches, and then the Roman Catholic Church, as well as the Pentecostal World Fellowship. And together we discern what God is saying to the churches. We share our journeys with Jesus. We explore matters of mutual consent. From the General Secretary of the World Council of Churches, uh, he writes that we should have joint action and responses to a world that is so much in need of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Indeed, this world is in need of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is a historic moment. And we congratulate you on this occasion and pray the Lord's blessing. We are looking forward to working together to advance the cause of Christ globally in the power of the Holy Spirit under the authority of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Thank you. God bless you. What a blessing to be part of this. Hello, I'm Dr. Billy Wilson, president of Oral Roberts University and chair of the Pentecostal World Fellowship, as well as global co-chair for Empire 21. And I want to say to you, Dr. Thomas Schermacher, congratulations on your new appointment as General Secretary for the World Evangelical Alliance. I also want to assure you, as one of the leaders of the Pentecostal charismatic, spirit-empowered movement around the world, that we want to partner with you to reach the earth for the glory of Jesus Christ. We believe that God is calling us in the 21st century to unite with our brothers and sisters across the body of Christ for the greater good. And most importantly, so the witness of Jesus can be known by every person on this planet over the next several years. In fact, in Empire 21, we have a big vision that every person on earth would have an encounter with, an authentic encounter with Jesus Christ through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit by Pentecost 2033. So I pray as you enter this new role that the World Evangelical Alliance will join hands with us that we can reach the world for Jesus Christ. I know God is going to bless you. I hear great things about your leadership. Congratulations. Our prayers are with you. God is going to use you in this moment to touch evangelicals all over the globe. If I can serve you, let me know. God bless you and congratulations once again. Hello, I'm Michael O, and I've served as the Global Executive Director and CEO of the Lausanne Movement for the past eight years. 
Uh, it brings me much joy to congratulate the WEA on its appointment of Dr. Thomas Schirmacher as the next Secretary General. Uh, I first of all want to express my deepest thanks to Bishop F. Tendero, who served as Thomas's predecessor so faithfully, and it will be a great joy to find collaboration opportunities uh, with you, Thomas, as I have enjoyed with Bishop F. and Jeff Tungnacliffe before him. I appreciate especially your heart for the persecuted church and your fight for global religious liberty, and it will be a wonderful opportunity to take the strengths and graces of both Lausanne and the WEA to not only demonstrate the unity that we have in the body of Christ, uh, but also mobilize for the sake of the gospel. My sincere prayer for you, Thomas, is that the Lord would use all of your gifts and graces that he has prepared for you and in you, and that your model of leadership would be one of true humility, integrity, and simplicity to the encouragement of leaders all around the world. Congratulations. It's great to really work together in the kingdom of God. Thank you so much. We now come to a sacred moment where we formally want to commission Thomas Schumacher to the role of Secretary General of the World Evangelical Alliance. And I will now hand over to the Chair of the International Council of the World Evangelical Alliance, Dr. Goodwill Shana, to lead us through this moment. Our beloved brother, uh, Thomas Schumacher, following a comprehensive worldwide search for the leader of God's choosing, you have accepted our invitation to be the Secretary General and to be the CEO of the World Evangelical Alliance. We wish to set you apart for this ministry and ask you to formally affirm your belief in God's purpose and calling upon your life. Do you, Thomas Schermacher, believe that it is God that has called you to the role of Secretary General and CEO of the World Evangelical Alliance? I do. So help me God. Amen. And will you affirm against in God the Father? the Son and the Holy Spirit, and in the gospel of Jesus Christ as the power of God until salvation to everyone who believes, and your belief that the Holy Scripture is God's word through which the Holy Spirit governs his church. I do, so help me God. Thomas Schumacher, I will speak in my Tongan language from the South Pacific, then English. Te ketali ai fatongia. Kwao fakanofo koe ki ai e se su, ke tuaki ai kosipeli, mohono fakahoko, ai kakai kotoa ko hene, kauti sai pale, koe lakanga i okufuaki ki ate koe. Will you take the commission of Jesus to proclaim the gospel in both word and deed, and to make disciples of all peoples as your mandate in the leadership of this ministry? I will. So help me God. Do you dedicate yourself afresh to be a servant leader after the model of Jesus Christ, always asking for the leading and empowering of the Holy Spirit and having as your goal that God the Father, our Lord of the Lord Jesus Christ will be glorified? I will. So help me God. Al-Aziz Al-Mutran Thomas. قيادة الروح القدس أن نأتي معا إلى هذا الحدث المميز حدث ترسيمك كرئيس المجمع الإنجيلي العالمي ونحن نريد أن نوصيك ونمد يمين الشركة لك ونوصيك في كلام الكتاب المقدس المكتوب في بطرس الأولى أربعة عشرة ليكن كل واحد بحسب ما أخذ موهبة يخدم بها بعضكم بعضا كوكلاء صالحين على نعمة الله المتنوعة آمين E também com as palavras do apóstolo Paulo em 2 Timóteo 4:2 Pregue a palavra, esteja preparado a tempo e fora de tempo, repreenda, corrija, exorte com toda a paciência e doutrina. Дорогой епископ Томас Позвольте нам благословить ваше служение в качестве генерального секретаря Всемирно-Евангельского Альянса древними словами благословения, которые Бог даровал Моисею и Аарону. 
Да благословит тебя Господь и сохранит тебя. Да презрит на тебя Господь светлым лицом своим и помилует тебя. Да обратит Господь лицо свое на тебя и даст тебе мир. Аминь. My dear friend, brother, Bishop Thomas, I am handing over to you the responsibility of the role of the Secretary General of the World Evangelical Alliance. May this globe be close to your heart as it is close to the heart of God. And I give you this Bible, a Chinese Bible printed in Nanjing that it will be close to your heart because this is God's word, the final authority in all matters of faith and conduct. Make sure that you provide leadership based on the teachings of the word of God. And may God give you the courage and strength, favor, as you take on this solemn responsibility. God bless you. Thank you very much and Amen. Dear Bishop F., as a special surprise, I would like to hand you this recognition of your service for WA. It says, for leading the World Evangelical Alliance with grace, dedication, professionalism, and humility, and for being a true partner in the gospel. And the term is taken from Philippians 1, verse 5. I hand you over this Put it on your desk, remember the time, and see this also as the guarantee that I know I'm on your shoulders and I want to carry on what you have given to WA. Thank you very much. Even so, our family is not here. I also have a small gift from my wife to your wife in remembering the event in Bonn. Mm -hmm. Even so, we are in Köln and give our heartiest greetings to your wife and thank her for all she has done to back you in your service. Thank you. We now want to pray for our new Secretary General and we have asked three people to do so on behalf of the Evangelical Alliance. This will be Dr. Goodwill Shana, Chair of the International Council of the World Evangelical Alliance, Dr. Reinhard Schink, the General Secretary of the German Evangelical Alliance, where Thomas is a part of, and on behalf of the different regions of the World Evangelical Alliance, we have asked Rachel, I'm sorry, I still can't pronounce your surname, to pray as well. So let's pray together. I'm going to ask us to join our hearts across the globe as Moses laid his hands on Joshua, as the leadership of the Antioch Church laid their hands on Paul and Barnabas. So Lord, we lay our hands upon Thomas Schermacher, whom we have chosen at this time and season and set apart for the great work of leading your global family, the World Evangelical Alliance. As we lay our hands on him, may your great, gracious, and enabling hand be upon him. Grant him the endowment and the endowment of spiritual gifts, wisdom, and strength that will help him to serve you well and to excel in his ministry to your people that you gave your life for. We pray that through his hands and leadership, your kingdom will come and your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May you strengthen his hands, guide his feet, lower every mountain, lift up every valley, and cause your grace to abound upon him for your glory and for your kingdom. May the blessing of the Lord, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit, and the purpose of Almighty God abide upon you in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Lord Jesus, we are living in very, very special and challenging times. Therefore, we thank you that you are the rock on which we stand. We confess that it's in, not in our strength, 
it's not in our cleverness and it's not in our strategy that the World Evangelical Alliance still exists and prospers. The reason is just your mercy and faithfulness. We are so thankful that you are keeping your promises you gave the WEA and that you blessed us with people who brought this into reality. Thank you for Thomas and his skills and the leadership cap capabilities. Thanks for his love to you and his commitment to the World Evangelical Alliance. Thanks for all the blessings you provided already through him. And we ask you that you will bless him abundantly in his new responsibility, that you will guide and protect him, yes. that you will open up new opportunities before him and us. Thomas, we bless you with the love of the Father, the authority of Jesus Christ, and the guidance through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thomas, it's Rachel Afiaki, Dunwoy Fial from the South Pacific Evangelical Alliance region. Lord God, we come before you this morning, praying from out of the South Pacific Evangelical Alliance region. Throughout the world right now, online, we stand as one calling for kingdom unity across your global church. As far as the east is to the west and the south is to the north. Thank you, Lord, you have appointed Bishop Thomas for such a time as this to lead and be your hands and feet for your church here on earth. Through his leadership for the WEA, let Bishop Thomas be a reflection of your nature, prophetically, apostolically, to evangelize, to pastor, and to continually teach your word for the perfecting of the saints, the WEA family, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Bishop Thomas, Lift up your eyes to the mountains, and when you ask, where does my help come from? You will know your help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you, Bishop Thomas. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forever. Amen and Amen. I now invite our new Secretary General, Thomas, to introduce to us his leadership team, which consists of two deputies. Over to you, Thomas. Yes, I would like to introduce to you the new two deputy secretary generals. This is uh, Dr. Peron Ling from Singapore, who is with me here in the studio, and Dr. Brian Winslade from New Zealand, who in the, this moment is on the opposite side of the globe in the studio there, together with friends from New Zealand and from the South Pacific. Let's watch two videos to get to know the two a little better. Hi, I'm Perong Lin and I am honoured to be the Deputy Secretary General for Operations of the WEA. In 2018, I joined WEA in the Theological Concerns Department. There, I was the Human Resources Director as well as the Research Coordinator. This enabled me to combine my love for theology with different organisational activities. I participated in academic conferences as well as took part in different workforces within the organisation. This included the Programme Committee for the General Assembly as well as the recently approved Roadmap Team. These different experiences gave me an uh, understanding of WEA as an organisation as well as the desire to build further on its strengths. I am from Singapore, a tiny country one degree north of the equator. Growing up in a loving family, we came to Christ when my parents, who were not Christians then, felt the desire to know more about this Christian God. We were invited to different church communities and God gradually opened my eyes to His love. This led me to want to love and follow Him. My faith was further deepened by the friendship shared in my Christian secondary school. 
After graduating with a Bachelor of Business Administration, I started working with World Vision in the Human Resources Department in the Asia-Pacific office. I continued studying for a Master of Organisational Leadership while working. During my stint at the Human Resources Department, I was privileged to travel across the region to support different offices with their needs. Personally, I love working alongside diverse groups, bringing them together to reach their common goals. Wanting to reflect on religion and development further, I became more involved with the Faith and Development Department of World Vision. One outcome of this was my doctoral studies that focused on the Christian identity of the organisation. What does it mean for an organisation to be Christian? What is this magic that sets us apart from other organisations? One of my main findings is the importance to be intentional in reflecting Christian values in both the content and processes of the organisation. In 2012, I moved to Brussels, Belgium after marrying Dirk, a fellow development worker who shared the same values and purposes in life. Besides working on my doctoral studies, I coordinated the Institute of Leadership and Social Ethics, which encouraged Christian values to leaders in the heart of Brussels. I was also part of a missional community where we actively served. Since 2018, we called Bonn, Germany our home. In 2019, we were delighted to welcome our son, Hansi. Together, we continue to serve God as a family in our local church. As we begin this new season, I look forward to building on the past successes of the WEA. I hope to bring together my diverse experiences, particularly the link between theology and management, as well as my cross-cultural skills. May all our work and efforts bring glory to God. Hi, my name is Brian Winslade and it's my privilege to join the WA team as Deputy Secretary General. I'm a relative newcomer having entered the WA ranks at a governance level as a member of the International Council since 2018 and then in 2020 I was a member of the Executive Committee. A bit about me as a person, I'm married to my best friend Liz since 1979. We have three adult children and, last count, eight grandchildren. I'm the son of a pastor and came to personal faith in Christ in my teenage years. Now, we currently live in my home country of New Zealand, that's way down there on the bottom of the world map, but we're the first to see the sun each new day. But over the years, we've lived and worked in four different countries. For the last 42 years, I've been a Baptist pastor, including as a missionary in Bangladesh. We worked with the National Christian Fellowship of Bangladesh, that's the, uh, their Evangelical Alliance, overseeing their Relief and Development Ministry. Uh, I've pastored five multiple staff churches in New Zealand and also in Northern California. And, well, over the years, I've consulted and taught at leadership conferences, uh, conventions, seminaries in many parts of the world. From 2001 to 2006, I was CEO or national leader of the Baptist denomination in New Zealand and then from 2008 to 2011, uh, national director for the Baptist Churches of Australia. As a graduate of Bethel University in Minnesota, my doctoral work centered around organizational systems and redefining contemporary ecclesiology so that mission becomes the driving force of the church. I'm a strategic thinker. Uh, my dominant spiritual gifts are in leadership, teaching, and wisdom. I, I describe myself as an ecclesial missiologist with a passion for developing the leadership of others and seeing the whole gospel of Christ taken to the whole of God's world. Having a deep sense of God's call to work with the WEA, I, I look forward to serving and visiting our member bodies once international travel becomes available again. In the meantime, Electronic conferencing and communication, well, that's our new best friend as we explore new ways to express our unity and common vision as a global movement of evangelicals. I now would like to invite Dr. Lawrence Shia, Chair of the Singapore Evangelical Alliance, the country where Perong was born. Greetings to all from Singapore. Before I have the privilege of leading in prayer, may I be allowed to convey 
the joy and prayerful congratulations and good wishes to our new office bearers. And now let us pray. O God, our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the great and good God that you are and that you have chosen us not only to be your own, but also to have a part in this wonderful WEA family. We are glad and grateful for the leaders you have raised and given us, especially in the persons of the Secretary General and his deputies. As we thank you again for the outgoing ones, we now pray for the incoming office bearers. We want now to especially pray, giving you thanks for our sister, Dr. Peron Lin, and your call to her for this high office. We thank you for preparing her for her role over the years through her faith and faithfulness, service and ministry, commitment to your word and work. We thank and praise you for her track record of theological education and service, management expertise and contributions, both in various Christian organizations and in WEA itself. We anticipate and rejoice that you would use the rich relationships and enriching experiences you have given her for her role as a member and a member of this team. Thank you too for her special sensitivities and insights. We're especially thrilled and thankful for all the added possibilities for the WEA in Asia, even as it continues and renews its global role. So once again, do bless Peyron and her family in days ahead in her enduring and endearing ministry. So bless her, O Lord. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. I now would like to invite Stuart Lange, who is the General Secretary of the New Zealand Christian Network, which is the, European, the Evangelical Alliance of New Zealand, Brian Winslade's home country. Let's pray. E to mato matu e te rangi, whakapaenga toa noa, our Father in heaven, may your name be glorified. We thank you for your grace towards Brian, your calling on his life and his extensive experience. We ask you to anoint and empower Brian afresh as he takes up this role. Grant him wisdom, an ever-deepening heart for you and all God's people, and excellent spiritual and physical health. We also pray that you bless his wife Liz. E runga e te ngoa o to tatua riki o iukuraiti in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. And as you saw, Brian was surrounded by leaders from New Zealand and the South Pacific region. Now I invite Dr. Jay Matanga, Director of the Department of Mission and Evangelism and thus member of the Senior Leadership Team of the World Evangelical Alliance, to pray both for Perong and Brian. Terangkoto no Atiara. Greetings everyone from New Zealand. Kai no Tato. Let us pray. Our great God, creator of the heavens and the earth, we come together to celebrate before you the Tongarangatera, the gifts of respected leaders in Reverend Dr. Brian Winslade and Dr. Perong Lin to serve as leaders for your people in the World Evangelical Alliance. To enhance their natural competencies, bless them with every spiritual gift required for their roles. Lord, make your great wisdom readily available to them along with your grace in abundance. God in heaven, make us one as you are one, plural and undivided, as they serve with Bishop Thomas, lead doctors Brian and Perong clearly along your narrow way that we might follow as a witness to all nations. For your glory alone, O oh God. Amen. Ta kuta Brian, ta kuta Perong, whakamanahia mato ia kaurua, Mo Timahi, Dr. Brian and Dr. Perong, we commend you to the task. Thank you. We look forward to working together.
Thank you. It is now my uh, singular honor and privilege to officially welcome our new Secretary General, the Reverend Bishop Professor Thomas Schermacher and his wife, Catherine. My history of WA, although I've been associated with our National Evangelical Alliance and the Alliance in Africa for the past 25 years, is somewhat limited. And so you may forgive me if my uh, narration of uh, this particular segment is erroneous. Uh, but uh, in my short history, I'm not aware of any Secretary General uh, with as much accomplishments academically, ecclesiologically, uh, and uh, in the exposure and experience of WA as uh, the Bishop Professor Thomas Shermark. And so, uh, we are deeply grateful to the Lord for giving us uh, such a valued uh, and uh, amazing servant to serve us even at this moment. The search process and the search committee could not have anticipated that's, that this would be the turn of events. And it is indeed marvelous in our eyes, and it is the doing of the Lord. Thomas and his team. Leadership in an unprecedented time office of the Secretary General has the capacity and the diversity to make WA a great organization. The team has its work cut out for them in this era of COVID 19 challenges. First, there's the work of the roadmap. Uh, and these four strategic priorities to pursue and to make a reality. Then there's the need for better and more strategic organization and structure. And thirdly, there's need for better communication, connection and collaboration across the WA global family. This is just to name a few of the things that they are going to have to uh, get to work uh, on Monday as they start. The next decade is also full of uncertainties and the post-COVID world is many things that are known. But we are confident of this one thing from Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6, that he that began a good work in you, Thomas, and Brian, and Peron will bring it to completion until the very day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our prayers and our faith are with you. We have the full and the unreserved support of the International Council, its chair, the executive committee, and the prayers and support of the whole of the WA family and other partners who are gathered here together today. This is a testimony of the goodwill and the grace that accompanies you on your journey. We say may God bless you, may God richly uh, uh, endow you with all the necessary giftings, abilities, and uh, vessels that you need to make your tenure and your work in WA fruitful and to the glory of his kingdom and of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we want to say welcome, uh, Thomas and your team, and may God bless you. I look forward to our monthly meetings uh, on the 14th, and I look forward uh, uh, to continuity. I look forward to renewal. I look forward to transformation in the years ahead. May God richly bless you. Thank you, dear Goodwill. Welcome Thomas and Peirong and Brian to your new roles. And now it is time to hear from our new Secretary General, Bishop Thomas. Dear Thomas, together with the WA family, I'm looking forward to your inaugural address. Kindly take the floor. Thank you very much. The World Evangelical Alliance is a very diverse movement. When in 1846, Anglican priests and the Salvation Army started to work together, people thought that would not be possible. German Lutheran pastors and professors invited Methodists from the United States to preach the gospel. In Germany, that was unheard. Today, we are even much more diverse. We have been, become much more worse confessionally. We have become much diverse in ethnic questions, in language, in culture. 
We have churches in the Brazil rainforest with that worship 10 meters above the ground in high trees. And we have churches in skyscrapers in Malaysia who have their church in the 20th floor of a high building. What then is evangelical? Well, I can tell you one thing, evangelicals never agreed on politics. And you can see this around the globe. We have countries in which we have members, evangelical members in parliament, in the government side and in opposition. We did not agree on politics yesterday and we did not agree on politics in 8046. This is not the secret of the evangelical movement. For me, to be evangelical, evangelical as the term describes the enthusiasm for the DNA of Christianity. Yes, also the search for the DNA of Christianity. And I want to think a little bit about the question how this relates to the DNA of Christianity, if we call it evangelical. To give you an example, we believe in the resurrection of Jesus, we believe in Pentecost, that the Holy Spirit filled the believers, the members of the church. Now, in so far, someone questions the historicity and says it did not happen or does not need to happen in, in, in real history. We stand for the history of our faith. Jesus did get new life from his father. The Holy Spirit fell on the believers. And then some will say that is evangelical. But we do not believe in this because we think it's something confessional, something specific. We believe in it because we think it's the DNA of Christianity that we owe everything to what Jesus did and what the Holy Spirit does. When it comes to the Bible, we are deeply convinced that the Bible is the confession of the church. You might ask why does he use a political term? Well, if you look into history, the idea of a paper document that would rule the people comes from the Old Testament. The Torah in the Old Testament was above David, was above the king, was above everybody. Some people mock at us and say we have a paper pope. We are proud to have a paper pope because the paper pope assures that none of us, including me, are above the word of God. We all submit to the word of God. No one is above him. No, there is someone above him. It's Jesus himself, who is the center of Holy Scripture, and the Holy Spirit, who is the author of Holy Scripture, at least to our belief. And this is where we think a movement like ours can bring together the huge emphasis of the Reformation 500 years ago on Holy Scripture with a lot of revival movements, including our Pentecostal friends and our charismatic friends, and their emphasis on that the Holy Spirit is the only one that can transform us and can, trans can transform the world. Let me quote to you from a very Calvinist document, people would say, 1647, in the Westminster Confession, written in England. There it says, the supreme judge by whom all controversies of religion are to be determined and all degrees of counsels, opinions of ancient writers, doctrine of men and private opinions are to be examined and in whose sentence we are to rest can be no other and you would expect now than the scripture. No, in 1647 they said, can be no other but the Holy Spirit speaking in scripture. We believe the Holy Spirit is ruling his church. What we believe that is not in opposition to Holy Scripture, but he is the author of the Holy Scripture and he is using his confession, the Holy Scripture, to rule the church. That for us is DNA of Christianity and it is evangelical. In so far as some people question it, then it might be seen as something specific to us, but we believe it's Christian. And that came very true 
In just two examples I want to give them shortly, I already mentioned the document Christian Witness in the multi-religious world. Evangelicals always have been about preaching that Jesus died on the cross for us and only in him we find communion with God and eternal life. But now the document 2011 starts with mission is the very being of the church and speaks about every believer to be obliged to witness to other people about the gospel. Is this evangelical or Christian now? It is Christian in so far as obviously all churches agree now that mission is the very being of the church. This is what Jesus Christ handed us over. In so far that not everybody is happy about it or enacting it, it might be seen as evangelical. But we have to be very careful to say that automatically we do what it is said. Mission is not always the being of our local churches. We often have to be reminded as evangelical churches that we have to put the witness of the ghost gospel into the center. And then there is the last example, uh, religious freedom and persecution. In 1846, the World Evangelical Alliance was the first ever large religious body, body speaking up for religious freedom. And that meant speaking up against state churches, against Christian nationalism. We know that even in our ranks still today is a very hot potato against Christian nationalism, against the state pressing his religion, his thoughts on the church. After a long history, meanwhile, the Catholic Church in the Second Vatican Council said exactly the same that religious freedom is not only just a political principle, but it's the DNA of Christianity. Is this evangelical? Well, we have stood for it for a long, long time, but we did not stand for it as a confessional extra, but as the belief that this is Christianity pure. God himself wants to be loved, wants us to trust him. He wants our life. He does not want us to Pray to him because we are forced or because somebody paid us or somebody cheated us. He wants our very trust and very heart and his very love. And love is something you cannot force on. So I'm deeply convinced that the evangelical movement stands up for specifics in the Christian world. But they are not specific in the sense that they are owned by us and distinguish us from others but they are the DNA of the Christian faith itself. And when we strive for unity within evangelicalism, if we want to bring the Anglicans, the Pentecostals, the Reformed, the Salvation Army, all those groups in our midst together, we only can do it around this DNA of Christianity. And we are open to any other church outside our movement to join us in those points of the DNA. And so we hope wherever possible to prolong our vision to many other churches in this world. Thank you very much. I'm privileged to serve the World Evangelical Alliance. I know we all are sinners. We are under the one Holy Scripture, which defines when we fail in what we do. And so I'm deeply convinced that is only the prayer of millions and the prayer of close friends who might know some things which others do not know about me that makes it possible to take over a task which is too big just for one human being. Amen. Thank you very much, Thomas. Together with the WA family, I'm wishing you God's blessing and the best of luck for your new role. The WA family is large and we are scattered across the globe. But we are united in our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. The global WA is made up of local church communities and organizations. And now, before we come to the end of our ceremony, we have the pleasure and the honor to hear prayers and words of encouragement from WA family members from Trinidad and Tobago, Argentina, Switzerland, Angola and the United States. They will share with us prayers for the new WA leadership team. We will hear prayers about unity, mission, religious freedom, creation care, and the gospel for all nations. Good day to the members of the WAIC and other leadership teams. 
family members, and guests, the Evangelical Association of the Caribbean welcomes Dr. Shemarka to the office of Secretary General and the CEO. John 17.21 speaks to the unity that WEA desires its members to live out. And so today I pray that for us. Dear Heavenly Father, may we all be one as you, Father, are in Jesus and Jesus is in you, that we also may be one in you. I pray, Father, that the world may believe that you sent the Christ. Dear Jesus, minister your grace, your patience and peace to Dr. Shemaka today and always. May his tenure point us to and keep us in this unity. Amen. Qué bendición estar juntos celebrando un momento tan especial. Como familia de Wea alrededor del mundo, queremos bendecir la vida de Bishop Dr. Thomas y su familia, sabiendo que la tarea para continuar con la misión será ardua y no fácil en los tiempos que nos tocan vivir. Pero confiamos que tomados de la mano de Dios, todo es posible. Isaías 41.10 dice, no temas porque yo estoy contigo. No te angusties porque yo soy tu Dios. Te daré la fuerza y te ayudaré, dice el Señor, porque Él te sostiene con su mano victoriosa. Dios Todopoderoso, venimos a pedirte toda la bendición sobre la vida de Bishop Thomas. Que tu presencia vaya delante de él, guiando cada paso. Que tu sabiduría lo llene sobre cada decisión. Y que tu poder se haga real en cada momento de su vida. Oramos y lo bendecimos en el nombre poderoso de Jesús. Amén. Amén. Proverbe 31, versets 8 et 9, dit ceci. « Ouvre ta bouche pour celui qui ne peut pas s'exprimer, pour la cause de tous les délaissés. Ouvre ta bouche, juge avec justice et défend le malheureux et le pauvre. » Seigneur, je te prie que ce verset puisse guider l'Alliance évangélique mondiale, Thomas Schirmacher et son équipe, ainsi que chacun de nous dans notre plaidoyer. Je te demande euh, que tu... Mettre tes mots dans sa bouche et dans la bouche de l'Alliance évangélique mondiale. Euh, que tu nous donnes euh, le courage, que tu nous donnes le discernement et l'amour pour élever nos voix, pour les délaisser, pour le malheureux et pour le pauvre. Amen. Saúde aux membres de l'Alliance évangélique mondiale, en spécial notre nouveau secrétaire général, Dr. Thomas, avec la bendita paix de notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ. Deus nos otorgou a missão importante de, de cuidar da sua criação e nos confiou a especial tarefa de apacentar as suas ovelhas. Num mundo como hoje, que parece que tudo em nossa volta está em acelerada e constante mudança, é crucial que nós, servos que carregamos a voz profética de Deus, voltemos às palavras do nosso Criador na fundação do mundo, cheios de amor pelas almas perdidas, fé no poder de Deus e zelo no cumprimento da tarefa de cuidarmos da sua criação. Nos lembrando das palavras de Jó, pergunte porém aos animais e eles ensinarão, às aves do céu e elas contarão a você, quem de todos eles ignora que a mão do Senhor fez isso? Em sua mão está a vida de cada criatura e o fôlego de toda a humanidade. Deus é que tem sabedoria e poder, a ele pertence o conselho e o entendimento. Minha oração, Dr. Thomas, é que o Deus da sabedoria te dê espírito de discernimento e entendimento para guiar a Aliança Evangélica Mundial nos próximos anos. Graça e paz. Romans 1, 14-16 I am obligated both to Greeks and non-Greeks, both to the wise and the foolish. That is why I am so eager to preach the gospel also to you who are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first the Jew, then to the Gentile. Bishop Thomas, this obligation that you have, this role that you are taking, comes because of the greatest gift that you have received, the gospel. The powerful, transformative, for all people, good news. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your abundant generosity and life-changing grace 
available to all who ask. Please fill our brother Thomas with your love and passion and your heart for the world. Equip him for the task at hand, we pray. Amen. What a great joy and privilege to see the diversity of our global Christian family coming together for this digital event in prayer before our Lord. We have almost reached the end of our handover ceremony. But before we officially close, I am deeply honored to hand over to someone who has played an important role in elevating WEA to the global scene. It is no other than Jeff Tunnicliffe, the former WEA Secretary General, who has joined our event today. Jeff Tunnicliffe has served the WEA as a Secretary General from 2005 until 2014. Dear Jeff, thank you very much for joining us. I am looking forward to your closing prayer and benediction. Kindly take the floor. Let us pray. Holy Father in heaven, we want to thank you for this gathering of your people from around the world. It's been a holy time together. We recognize the diversity of your family around the world, and this has been a demonstration of that today. And Father, we want to thank you for the work of the World Evangelical Alliance. We thank you for the diversity of leadership, the power of the leadership you have given to this global community. And Father, we want to thank you for the WA at this moment in history. We recognize that we live in a time of struggle and pain and division. And we believe that you have called the World Evangelical Alliance for such a time as this. And Father, I want to thank you. We want to thank you together for this smooth transition of leadership. We thank you for the work again of Bishop F. And he transitions his leadership to the work of uh, our, our friend and brother, Thomas Schumacher. And I pray, Lord, that in these coming days, in these coming months, you'll bring cohesion in the team, a sense of clear direction. We know, Lord, that there is power of the gospel found in our diversity. And our prayer is that you would use WA and its leaders to impact the world for good, to impact the world with the gospel. So again, Lord, we want to thank you for this great community of the World Evangelical Alliance. We thank you for the friends and colleagues and other uh, networks around the world that share this moment of joy together. And specifically now, I want to, again, uh, commit uh, Dr. Schumacher to you. I pray that you'll give him much wisdom, guidance, strength, and protection. Be with him, I pray, and thank you again for this calling you have on his life and the life of World Evangelical Alliance. And thank you for this global gathering that we've experienced together. May we know your work and the power of the Spirit, and we pray that this will be done in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, dear Jeff. Now we have reached the end of our handover ceremony for the Secretary General of the World Evangelical Alliance. I would like to thank all of the speakers and contributors to this event on behalf of the WA leadership. Thank you very much for your invaluable contributions and support to this event. It would not have been possible without you. I would also like to thank the production team and the media company and its producers, camera and microphone experts without whom this event would definitely not have been possible in such times as, as these. To all who joined us today via the live stream, I would like to say thank you for joining the handover ceremony of the Secretary General of the World Evangelical Alliance. We hope you keep in touch with us, be it digitally or hopefully soon in person again. Blessings to all of you and goodbye.